If you're thinking about moving to Dallas, Texas from out of state, and you're not really sure where to start, this is your complete relocation guide. Now, before we get started, this timeline that I've put together is really for mainly the procrastinators who typically will wait till the very last minute. So if you're a planner, just extend these timelines a little bit further out to make it a little bit more comfortable for you. But otherwise, we're gonna start around the eight week mark or the two month mark out from your move. And we're gonna call this the research phase. Now, of course, during the research phase, you're going to be doing just that, which is researching. You're going to be collecting a lot of information. You're going to be reaching out to a lot of companies, but you want to do this really as soon as possible because sometimes they don't get back to you. Quotes can take some time. You get lost in the mix. Whatever the case may be, you want to really negate as much of that as possible by doing this as soon as possible. Now, there's some very important questions that you have to start asking yourself as well to help you in this planning process. Number one is going to be, do you need to sell your house before you are able to qualify for the next house. And what does that mean exactly? Now, depending on your debt to income ratio, that means based on what you earn will help establish what you can afford. And if you're unable to afford two homes at once, then you're going to need to get one either completely sold or under contract. Now, lenders can take into consideration that if the home is under contract, that it will close at a certain date before you close on the next home. But at the same time, it's better to time this very strategically and so this is why we always recommend to give us a call and to talk to a preferred lender in the state you're moving to. So for example, we're in Dallas, Texas. If you don't have a lender in place, we work with the absolute best team in our opinion that can help you with that. Now, of course, there's no obligation. You can choose any lender you want, but if you want our primary recommendation, we'd be happy to forward that on to you. What they do is they get into a conversation with you and look at these types of things, right? This is part of the pre-qualification process to make sure that we set everything up so there's no surprises whenever it comes time to move because the last thing you wanna do is have your entire house packed up, making the road trip down or the flight or whatever the case may be. And then all of a sudden you're unable to close on your new house because you didn't understand these types of things ahead of time. Now, most lenders uh, should set you up for success whenever they're doing this, but you'd be surprised how many times the wrong lender can drop a ball. And if you go with a big bank lender or a nationally recognized lender that has just a ton of locations every everywhere. You know, whoever you call in and get is usually who you're going to get. Big bank institutions usually take a lot longer to get through that process. They're a little bit more uh, scrutiny behind that as well. And then if you call some of these online or internet lending companies at the same time, you could call in and get somebody different every time. They'll usually try to assign you to somebody, but it doesn't mean that that person will always be available. And you'd be surprised how many times those loan officers quit in the middle of loans taking place. So we work with a team that has been in the business for a very long time and has taken absolute complete care of all of our clients. We've never had an issue and they're the best at what they do. But the thing is, is that you want to make sure again, where do you fall in your income to debt ratio? And as far as uh, being able to carry two mortgages or one. So if we need to sell your house before you can qualify for the other one, you also have a gap in there of needing a place to live just in case. Now we have solutions for that, such as leasebacks, which means you can sell your house and lease it back to the person that bought your house for a certain time frame, which will allow us to close on the other house. But again, we're not going to get into all the details of that right now, but you need to understand that these are the options available and we have to understand this ahead of time. That way we can help you plan accordingly. Hey, it's Levi here. And if you're thinking about moving to the Dallas, Texas area or the surrounding suburbs, go ahead and subscribe below so you can be the first to learn about the current market here in Dallas, Texas. And Travis and I just love helping people just like you make their move here. So whether that's nine days or nine months, feel free to reach out all of our contact information is below. We'd be happy to help you make a smooth move to Dallas. Now, the next thing you should be asking yourself is what neighborhoods do you want to consider? Now, if you're on this channel, then clearly you can see that we have a ton of videos that you can choose from, but that could get a little bit overwhelming as well. So maybe uh, you've had friends that have moved out here. Maybe you know a family. Maybe your job is relocating you to somewhere that uh, you want to live close to that proximity. So I would always start there. But mainly you can go onto our channel and hit a search bar if you want to search specific areas in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And there's probably a pretty good chance that we've created a video on that area. And most likely we've created multiple videos on the most popular areas that we get questions about all the time. So you wanna start trying to narrow that down because if you look across Dallas-Fort Worth, there could be a hundred different suburbs and communities within Dallas-Fort Worth. So if you can choose where you wanna live, 
live. Uh, and whenever I say choose, I mean, if you're not going to be traveling to a job at a certain location, you can pretty much choose wherever you want to live. And there's a ton of choices and it could get extremely overwhelming. And what I love most is that people call us all the time and they say, based on your videos, I have this narrowed down to two different suburbs we want to take a look at. So if you start watching as many videos as possible right now, because you're unsure of what area you'd like to live in, this will help you narrow things down because I don't believe you want to come to Dallas, Fort Worth and then start to try to figure it out at that time because there's just way too much, especially there's way too much ground to cover, way too many communities and suburbs. You'll get very overwhelmed. It'll make the decision process very difficult. So if you start trying to uh, get a good idea by looking at all the different videos on the channel, it should help you start to narrow it down to two, three, maybe even four suburbs that seem like a better fit for you. And therefore it should make it easier. So whenever you do come into town that uh, we're only looking at a few spots and we've got that narrowed down. And then of course, once you've narrowed it down to a couple of those different areas, then you can start researching the schools, things to do, you know, shopping, all of the other things that are important to your lifestyle. And of course, probably number one with us is always going to be schools. So people are interested in the school districts. Dallas, Texas has some of the top rated public school systems in the entire country, especially in the suburb areas. And we have a lot of people making the move from the West Coast and the East Coast. You know, they don't necessarily agree right now with certain curriculums and things that are being taught in those schools. And so you also want to be able to call ahead. Once you've got this narrowed down to a few different suburbs, it makes it easier to reach out to some of these school districts as well to call in or whenever you come in to visit to go to those schools and talk to the staff, talk to the principals and some of the teachers and understand the type of curriculum and the things that are being taught in that school because that will be very important for you as well. But then of course, everything else kind of falls into place. I think most of you understand that if you move to an area, you're going to have access to some good restaurants, uh, bars, shopping, whatever really fits your needs. I mean, outdoor living, uh, outdoor lifestyle, entertainment. You know, you can pretty much find that in any of the areas all throughout Dallas and Fort Worth and the North Dallas area. But you know, if you like one thing over the other, that's something else you might want to search out. And uh, clearly you can do that through our videos or also Googling different types of things that really fit your interest and needs, especially maybe you don't have kids and you want to be closer to nightlife or hot spots or things like that, then that's an option for you as well. Now, the next step would be to assess your finances as well. You want to make sure that you budget accordingly for this move. So that also coincides with starting to reach out to companies to start to get quotes and pricing well ahead of time. Plus, you know, something like a moving company, this is one of the most important things to start getting into place way ahead of schedule because a lot of moving companies are booked up and they might be booked 30, 60, 90 days in advance. So if you wait until the last minute or you get your home under contract and then you're like, okay, all right, we did it. Now we're going to move in 30 days. You may find a lot less accessible moving companies because they can typically be booked out 30 to 60 days already. And so you don't want to be scrambling. So it's better to reserve something as soon as possible that suits the, the size of your home ideally. And you can usually do that with a deposit. Now, the other thing whenever you're assessing your finances is considering the cost of living. Now, if you're coming from the West Coast or the East Coast or even Illinois or um, the Northwest, I mean, cost of living is significantly different compared here to the Dallas, Texas area. So there's a lot of things most people will end up saving money on. So that's a good thing, especially when it comes to housing. You will find here that you will likely find much bigger homes for less money. And so people will come here and be shocked. I, I can't tell you how many times I've had a conversation that somebody growing up in New York or the Pacific Northwest, they've grown up there their entire lives and they never even looked at real estate in Dallas, Texas area. And it blows them away the size of the house they can get and how far their dollar stretches here. But there's a lot of other things that you have to keep in mind, especially property taxes. That's an issue that is a lot different from uh, West Coast and East Coast uh, property taxes. So you want to make sure you understand that whole situation. And, you know, when you're looking at these schools. If you're not entirely happy with a public school system, then you got to look into private school options if that's a consideration. So maybe you need to be closer to downtown Dallas and a lot of people in the downtown Dallas area will send kids to private school. So that's a thing you'll want to factor in and pricing will be significantly different likely from where you're moving from. So make sure you look into that as well. All right, now do you wanna plan a visit? You wanna do this, I believe, as soon as possible. And again, we're still in this eight week time frame that uh, we want to come down here, maybe make a trip, a weekend trip, whatever the case may be. Look, we are ready to help you out at any time of the week. It doesn't matter the weekend. It doesn't matter the time of month. If for any reason that myself,
myself. If I'm not here, then I've got a team member or Travis in place as well to always take my back. And so if you come into town weekday, weekend or weeknight, it doesn't matter. We have somebody available to help you out. And, you know, if you want to look around now, typically what we will do if you come in to visit is if you've got these areas narrowed down, we always try to figure out what do you have in your schedule? Not a lot of times everybody comes down to visit um, for three or four days and they want to see houses the entire time. Sometimes they want to check out schools. They want to check out extracurricular activities. They want to turn it into a little vacation as well, which is all great. And so we want to understand what days are you available to look at homes or neighborhoods that we can help you through that process. So if you're going to come down for five days and you want to spend two of those days specifically looking at certain neighborhoods, that's great. We'll schedule that out. But what we'll also recommend usually is that whenever you come into town, you go out and drive a lot of these neighborhoods on your own because you might eliminate some of them ahead of schedule. Plus, you know, when you're out and about, you know, spend some time, go to lunch, go to dinner, get breakfast somewhere, grab a cup of coffee, you know, start to get a feel for these neighborhoods in these areas and see if it's a good vibe from you. If you stop at a school and you talk to the teachers or the principal or someone like that, you'll start to get a good feel for it. You might end up eliminating a couple of areas before we go out looking for homes, which is a lot more time effective and efficient whenever we're in this process. Now, another thing to consider is getting a letter from your employer. If you're transferring with your current employer, you need a letter from that employer to help with the mortgage process if you're going to be applying for a loan. So that letter is very simple. Any employer should be happy to give it to you. That's simply stating the fact that you're making a move with the company. The company is planning to keep you on board. They're not going to get rid of you. The salary that's going to be in place when you come here. And again, because cost of living is typically lower from where people move in from, if they keep the same salary, that's a good thing. If they actually increase your salary, maybe you're getting a promotion or an incentive to move here. Well, even better. Where the problem comes into play is if they're decreasing your salary or if they say, well, this is going to be temporary or contract or, you know, uh, you know, whatever the case may be. But otherwise, you just need a letter from your employer that is supporting your move and the income. And so that way it doesn't disrupt anything. And that makes the loan process and approval much easier. Now, if you're renting, you want to give notice. OK, so I know typically notice is 30 days, but if you can give notice 60 days in advance, this is ideal as well. It's even better for your landlord as well because it gives them more time to plan. I think it's even better for all parties, but you want to make sure you give that notice. Nobody's blindsided and also keep an account for anything you might need to fix or repair in the unit so that you have the best chance to get your deposit back. And then you can use that towards your move or expenses or something else. Now, going back to your employer as well, make sure you check and see if they offer any incentive or relocation package for you to move as well. And now, if they're asking you to move, typically they will. And that's what getting the quotes and everything up front as well, because they may base that off of the quotes you get, or maybe they just offer you a lump sum. If they offer you a lump sum, then you'll want to work probably within that budget. And hopefully you can spend less than that lump sum and maybe get a pocket a little bit of money. All right. One more thing to consider as well is you might want to reserve a storage unit. Now, depending on how you plan this out, if you can time it perfectly that whenever you get there and you close on a house, you can just move your stuff right in. But if there's going to be some type of overlap or uh, instance where you maybe have to rent somewhere or you have to do a lease back or whatever the case may be, you want to have a storage in place as well. Those are usually booked well out in advance. So that is something else. Call some local storage facilities in the area you're moving to. Make sure you get one reserved. See if you can do something temporary. That way, whenever you make the move, maybe you only have to pay for a month or two, put down a small deposit, whatever the case may be. But these are the types of things you want to start checking on because moving companies, storage units, things like that can be a lot more booked out than you might expect. All right, now we're moving on to the planning phase. And in the planning phase, this could be about six weeks out. And there's some very key topics you want to cover in this as well. Now, this is a lot more of the logistical side of everything. And there's some key factors as far as like choosing your moving date. Now, this is going to be based on what you decided to do in the new area. So you're in Dallas, Texas. You have visited already maybe once or twice. Maybe you've contracted on a home. Now, depending on what that may be, remember, everything is negotiable. Typically, you will put a house under contract and close within 30 days. But, you know, depending on your timeline or what you need to do on the other home. And by the way, if you need to sell a home in your local market and you don't have a real estate agent in place, make sure you reach out and ask because we have some of the best agents all across the country that we partner with for these exact same situations. And so if you don't have a good real estate agent in your area or the last one <laughs> screwed up the deal and you need a solid referral,
referral, we'd be happy to give you a referral of somebody that can help you out in your area. And then whenever you come here, of course, we'll take 100% care of you. But typically, if you contract on a house, uh, if it's a pre-existing home, you know, we can always choose the closing date. Now, most sellers are going to want to close within a 30 day time frame unless they're trying to sell and move somewhere else as well. So again, leasebacks, these things uh, could take place maybe a 45, maybe even a 60 day close. All of that is possible. It just really depends on your situation, the seller situation and, and you selling your home. A lot of different factors to coordinate in there. And again, that's why we always recommend to just give us a call because we can talk through these types of situations with you. But once you've locked in that date um, that you're going to be closing on your home, then that's going to likely determine how you put your other home up in the market if you're selling a property. And again, we can kind of reverse engineer all of that, talk that through with you. So the main thing is, is just get it in motion, set it in place and go from there. Now, if you're contracting on a new construction house, that could be anywhere from 30, 60, 90, 120 days out. And the tricky thing with new construction is that even though you will set a closing date, does not guarantee you will close on that date because there could be builder delays. And if there's builder delays, that could cause a problem because if you set to sell your house at a specific time and you do sell that house and then you're making that move and there is a builder delay, then you fall in that housing purgatory of where you've got to do something in the interim. So of course, we've got solutions. Uh, we have seen that happen before. Not so much today, but you know, a year or two ago, especially when there is a significant amount of uh, lumber shortages and material shortages and supply chain issues, we were seeing closings delayed on new constructions at a significantly higher rate than we are right now. So right now, builders are doing a pretty good job of being able to close on time. So we don't think that's going to be an issue, but you always want to be prepared just in case. All right, now you're going to create your moving budget. Hopefully you have all of your quotes in place right now, and you've probably locked in all of your vendors that you're going to be working with, whether that's a moving company, storage facilities, all of that plays into a factor. You should be able to price all of this out by now. And again, if you got money from your company, hopefully you're under that budget. They're just going to reimburse you for what it costs. Then you should definitely pick the most expensive stuff. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, the main thing is, is that you have this laid out, you know exactly or pretty close to exactly what you're going to be spending on the move. Now, here's the other thing. Maybe you have rented a truck, but you have to ask yourself this question. Who's going to pack up the house? This is part of it. So I have moved all across the country myself. I've moved a significant other from Seattle to New Orleans. And of course, I moved from Dallas to New York and from New York back to Dallas and then from Seattle to New Orleans, New Orleans to Chicago. Chicago, Chicago to Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh back to New Orleans, New Orleans back to Dallas. And then of course that doesn't even count the times I was in the military and I moved around with the military. It was a lot easier in the military because I just had a duffel bag. That was easy and the military shipped me everywhere. So that wasn't a problem. But I have plane trained and automobiled all of those moves. I've done it every which way. I've hired companies to come in, pack everything in my house for me, load it up and just take it away. I have packed everything in my house, loaded it up myself or with a couple of friends and driven it myself. I have, uh, you know, I mean, whatever scenario there could be. And I will tell you from personal experience, <laughs> I only pay now for somebody else to do absolutely everything. So if your company is going to be paying for this, you want to get quotes on all of that as well. Somebody will come in to pack up your entire house, label it all, move it into the truck and then drive that truck. So you can just hop in your car or you could even have them tow the car on top of that if you want to take a flight. I have driven from from Seattle to New Orleans, from New York to Dallas. I mean, I've driven all of those and I've flown just depending on what the case was. And I have driven the U-Hauls myself. Not a lot of fun. Driven the U-Hauls with towing the car behind it. You know, interesting situation. I've traveled with animals, <laughs> two cats and a dog once in the car, cross country. I mean, oh man, it's, it's just a fun time. But now, I would pay somebody to do that. I would pay somebody to pack up everything, load it on a truck, and I would just drive my own car to wherever I'm going. But, you know, I'm happily married to Dallas right now, have been, uh, you know, I came back officially over five years ago and it was uh, best choice I could have ever made. Now, if you're going to be doing these types of things yourself, now you've got to buy the packing supplies. And I say, this is the difficult part about it. And this goes into the logistical aspects of this, because if you do hire a moving company, they're going to bring the boxes, bring the things 
things to pack everything up with makes it so much easier. If you're not hiring a moving company to do that, you're going to go to the store, you're going to buy all the boxes, you're going to buy all the padding, you're going to buy all the tape, all of that. So, and you've got to start packing that stuff up. So you want to account for that as well. Luckily, moving companies are pretty good. If you go down to local U-Haul or self storage or something, you can return any unused items. So if you do overbuy, that's better than underbuying, I think, and making several trips back and forth. But either way, I don't know, man, I just, I think that's one of the worst things is, is packing up your own house, but to each their own. Some people are very particular about that sort of thing and they want to do it themselves. That's okay. Me, I'm going to pay somebody to do it. And of course you want to have a miscellaneous budget as well, or an overflow budget or an emergency budget, just in case you never know what could happen. Now, if you're hauling, oh, I do remember one time I was moving and I was carrying, uh, hauling the U-Haul behind an SUV and <laughs> within one hour of getting out of town to the most remote area blew out a tire on the U-Haul trailer. Had to wait over two hours for them to come and change out that tire and get us back on the road. So, you know, if you're with the moving company, they have warranties and things like that, or, you know, guarantees. So they should take care of that. But if for some reason you're doing things on your own or moving stuff, you've got to account for some additional expenses. But again, just have a little bit of emergency fund as well, just in case if you underestimate or whatever the situation may be, that way you don't get caught off guard or if you do you have some money to spare and number three we're in the prep phase now so we're about four weeks out from the move you probably got a house under contract your current house is probably under contract ready to close in 30 days now it is go time you're going to start implementing other aspects which before you start packing up the house or you have somebody come out to pack up the house you want to start to sell declutter get rid of some things that you don't want to do because the last thing you want to do is pack. this is a great time to start to get rid of stuff because instead of packing it up, carrying it all the way across country and then figuring out, well, I don't really want this or let's do a garage sale or something, do that ahead of time. So if you start packing up in the process, this should be easier to do, right? If you're going to have somebody come pack for you, then you want to start going through everything you can and setting it off to the side. And either you're going to have a giant garage sale, you're going to donate, or you're going to sell on eBay or all of the above. Me personally, I, I typically donate as much as possible because I feel like it's just better that way. You know, if I sell some old clothes and things and I make a hundred bucks or 200 bucks for me, that's almost not worth the time to get everything set up, put out, you know, I don't know all that. I would rather just throw it all in the car, donate. Somebody else is going to get much better use out of that stuff. And I know the donation places really need it. So, it, and it also makes me feel better, right? So I just give it away. And there's a lot of stuff that every time I have moved, I have been able to get rid of a lot of stuff. So you start to declutter, donate, sell whatever you want to do. Of course, that's up to you. Now, maybe you offer it to the kids. Maybe the kids get to sell all that stuff and they can throw it on eBay or have a garage sale. And that would be fun for them. And I think that would be a great idea too. But otherwise, this is a great time to start getting rid of things. Plus this should cut down on moving costs because if it saves you from packing an extra two, three, four or five boxes, then guess what? Nobody has to move those. You don't have to buy those boxes. So you really take advantage of those savings as well. All right. You want to start updating memberships as well. So do you have a local gym only type of membership? You know, do you have a hair? I mean, I don't know, different types of memberships and things like that. You want to start seeing if you can get those transferred, if you have a nationwide access, whatever the case may be. Maybe you need to cut out some memberships. Maybe you go to a local CrossFit gym or something that is only run locally. You need to let them know, hey, I'm going to be moving in 30 days. Please cut off my billing at that time. So start either transferring or canceling memberships. Also, if you want to get a head start on packing, you can start to pack up maybe things that you're not going to use in the next 20 to 30 days. So depending on the season, it's either the winter or the summer clothes. Maybe that's already packed up. But if you're moving in the summer, maybe start packing all the winter clothes. You know, you can put all that away. Maybe you only pack all your clothes up to, you know, one to two weeks worth of clothes, depending on the situation. I know for me, every time I did that, I would pack up everything except about a week's worth of clothes I would put into a suitcase and I would have that ready to go. Plus, keep in mind if you're packing uh, plates, uh, spoons, forks, toilet paper, towels, those types of things as well. You want those to go last on the truck. Okay. Whatever it is you're packing up, make sure everything else that uh, you're not going to need right away goes at the front of the truck. And then right there, if you open up the door, because if you ever get somewhere and I've done this before where I pulled up and I had to, you know, stay overnight, have the trailer outside or whatever the case may be with the house then, and I needed something, it's easier to just open the door and pull out a box or two right there and be able to get things that you need towels, especially for showers, toilet paper, those types of stuff. But again, 
again, I would always pack a suitcase with a good seven days worth of stuff, including a towel and everything that I need in there. So just be mindful of how you start to pack things away where you're putting them if you're going to be doing it yourself. And if you have somebody else to come in and do it, you really only need to do this usually a day before you move. I mean, these moving companies come in, if you've never had that done before, they'll bring in three or four people and they'll just ran, they go through your entire house and pack everything in a day. I mean, it's crazy They'll, they take pictures off the wall, wrap them up. Blank, I mean, and they bring everything. That's the cool stuff. So that's what I love about it is they bring the boxes, they bring the blankets, they bring the stuffing, they bring all of that stuff. It's just so much easier. It's a little nerve wracking though. I mean, to watch, you know, four or five people go through your house and pack everything up, it can bring your anxiety level a little bit high. You know, even though it's so much easier, it always has made me a little uncomfortable to sit there and watch people just pack away all my stuff. So, you know, it is what it is, but I would rather have them do it than me do it all myself. All right, again, temporary housing. Hopefully you've already done this as well, but you need to start making sure that all of that is in place. If you're going to have a gap, depending on when you sell, when you buy, when you close, if you have to be somewhere for temporary housing, that's where the storage unit may come into place because you need to move everything to the storage unit first, stay somewhere for a week or two, depending on the situation. And then that way you're just not caught off guard. Now, another thing you wanna do is forward your mail. Okay, you can actually choose the date. So if you are moving in a couple of weeks, remember we're four weeks out now, you can choose it to be forwarded four weeks later. Now, if you work with our great friends at Utility Connect, I'll put a link below for them. I love them. Uh, Utility Connect, good, good friends of ours here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. They will take care of all of your utilities. Now, this is something that you call them and in one phone call, they're going to take care of everything for you. Electricity, gas, television, internet, you know, security, whatever the case may be, they can help you out, get everything switched over, timed accordingly, even forward your mail for you, all of that. Now, if you're moving into a community that self-services like trash and water, sometimes they can't connect that for you, but they will send you an email with all of the information that you need. And that way you can just reach out and make one simple phone call. But otherwise, they can take care of everything else. Utility Connect, we're partnered with them. We love them. And I know the crew personally, and I've used them myself. I couldn't recommend them enough enough. Check the description below for Utility Connect. This is a great way to get all of your utilities transferred in one phone call. All right, two weeks out now and you're in the administration phase, right? You really have to start making sure you got all of your logistics, all of your memberships, all, you know, your utilities, all of that is taken care of. You know, if you've made those phone calls and planned accordingly, all that should be in place. So you just want to go back and double check and make sure everything is good to go. Now, also you want to think about changing any credit cards. You have the new address. Now you may want to wait until you actually close on your home before doing that, but there's an option in there as well. These are types of things you want to start making notes of that, hey, in two weeks, whenever I do get there, I need to switch over my credit card accounts, you know, to the new billing addresses, things like that. So just small little tweaks on some of your everyday things you don't want to overlook. And whenever it comes to furniture, now here's the thing, in my experience, I've just found it not only with myself, but also with a lot of clients is that you may want to consider selling selling off your current furniture and buying new furniture for the new house. The reason being is because almost all the time we hear it, you end up moving all of that. And so you could cut down moving costs extensively. And then whenever people get old furniture from the old house into the new house, it almost never fits, looks the same or has the same feel. And I think you ladies know what I'm talking about. So transferring, you know, old furniture that has old memories with an old house, but also is was probably designed to fit certain rooms in certain ways is not likely going to fit the new house accordingly. And if you're okay with that, then you can sell off all that furniture. Again, it cuts down on the size of the truck you may need, packing additional supplies, you know, movers moving that stuff or you moving it as well. So if you're able to get rid of all that, and if you're able to buy new furniture, you want to schedule those delivery dates. Again, if you're doing this two to four weeks out, then typically furniture delivery is going to happen around that time frame. Now for me on the last time I moved, I timed everything accordingly to whenever I moved in the first night, the very next day, I was having everything delivered. I was buying all new furniture, everything for the house. And I set up all the deliveries, basically like nine, 11, one, three o'clock for different things. I had ordered uh, some appliances like washer and dryer, of course, furniture, rugs, things like that. So I went in and 
the funny thing was, is I had an air mattress. I went in the first night to the house, blew up an air mattress and you know, hey, that's all I needed. The next morning was able to fold that up. And then by 9 a.m., people were knocking on the door, bringing in rugs, you know, couches, beds, putting it all together, washer and dryer, boom, boom, boom. And within one day I was done. And the boxes were able to go in all the closets, get moved in. It was such an easy transition, but because I'd done this so many times before, I knew exactly how to plan all this out. So if you're going to be moving into a newer house or upgrading or getting a bigger house, especially because the cost is so much lower here in Dallas compared to everywhere else, then you want to consider that because if you live in a small house now on the West or the East Coast and you move into one of these big homes in Texas, yeah, the furniture, uh, not probably going to look good once you move it in there. Now, another thing you can do is also let all your doctors know, right? Your dentist, your doctor, everybody else say, hey, maybe you don't have somebody established already, but you want to let them know that I'm going to be moving. So you're probably going to get a request within the next couple of weeks for all of my medical records. So put them on alert, put them on notice. That way they know whenever they get the request, they, they know what's going on. You can also say your goodbyes. Uh, you know, thank you for drilling in my skull for the last 10 years, whatever the case may be. So something to consider there as well. You could prep them, let them know if you've already visited and looked at, or you've got recommendations of doctors or dentists, maybe that uh, friends or family have told you you should visit them instead. You could even have those records sent over ahead of time. And of course, depending on the company you work for, if you are working for a company, maybe you own your own business, but if you do work for a company, you want to start thinking about time off requests as well. Hopefully you've already done this in advance, but clearly if the company is moving you, depending on what the situation is, maybe they're paying for this. They don't mind that you're taking a few days to do that. But if you feel like you need some additional time, make sure you request some time off from work as well. So if you move into the new area, you want to get settled. Maybe you want a couple of days to just, you know, get everything in order, then you should request that time off. All right. Now we're at the cleanup phase, which is usually about one week before. So this is where, uh, you know, things could be all packed up, ready to go. Maybe they're not, you know, in the moving truck. Maybe they are, you know, the thing is, is that if you do hire a moving company, they are usually moving two or three or four homes at one time. They might bring in a semi truck to pack your things on and they will deliver accordingly, right? So if you are moving from New York or San Francisco to Dallas, they may be dropping off two or three other homes on the route down to Dallas. You could actually be the last stop. So you may need to pack things up a week ahead of time to give them a week or so to get down to Dallas. Sometimes it may take them two weeks depending on the route. That's why you have to call these companies, have these discussions with them ahead of time so that all this can be timed accordingly. But you could be in your house with nothing in there because it's all packed up. So again, you want to have a suitcase, you want to have your towels, your toothbrush, your toilet paper, you know, and maybe a blow up mattress or something like that because you may be sleeping in your house with nothing in there for a week or so until you make the move or they pack up everything. Now you want to clean up the entire house and I would highly recommend you hire a cleaning company to just come in and knock that out as well. Clean out the fridge, the stove, the microwave, do the deep, deep cleaning so it's nice and pristine for those people closing in. So if you don't want to stay in the house, then you take off. Again, maybe you've set up some temporary housing, you know, in Dallas now, you've got a place to stay, something like that. You want, again, different situations, but otherwise you want to start finding a cleaning company to come in, recommend deep cleaning the house. It's better to do that, I think, with a cleaning company. It's worth the cost, but also they, they can do a really good job because you don't want your buyers to come in and start nitpicking a lot of stuff and then feel like they're moving into a dirty house. And you want to schedule this for the home you're moving into as well. So even though the seller should have your home clean before you move into it, I would hire a cleaning company to come in that day I close. So if I'm closing on that day or the day after, I would have a cleaning company come in before everything's moved in, clean everything one more time, even if they just cleaned it. Again, I, I would just make me feel better to knock all of that out. And then maybe you have your furniture come the very next day. So think about that as well. Getting a cleaning company, not only for your place, but the place you're moving into and then furniture delivery. All right, now you're down to the final sweep, which is usually like the day before or the day you're leaving. Again, if you're leaving a week or two ahead of schedule before the home closes, you're going to need to do a final check of everything. Open every single drawer, cabinet, if there's anything left. I mean, just look in every nook and cranny, look in the shed, look in the storage, the garage, the attic. Make sure you check everything, okay? Do a final sweep and have your keys ready. If you're going to be leaving before your home closes, make sure you go to the title company or the closing company, whoever does it in your state. Leave them the keys, sign the paperwork, sign power of attorney, whatever the situation may be. Get all of that set up, do the final sweep, and you can walk out of there with a very clear conscience. All right, so now you've traveled, you've made it to Dallas, Texas. Uh, 
uh, you're getting all moved in, you're getting settled again. Now that you're in your home, if you've set up everything accordingly, like I've done before, you know, cleaning crew is going to come in, knock everything out, then furniture delivery, appliance delivery. And then sometime after that, your delivery of all of your things, right? Your clothes and your books and your office and all that other good stuff is going to come in. They're going to move, you know, put everything in. If you've hired a company, they will come in and bring in all the boxes and you can hire them to unpack everything as well. Unpack and put, start to put stuff up or most people like to unpack themselves. Unpacking always seems a little bit easier than packing. Yeah, it does. So, you know, maybe you want to do that yourself, get everything set up to the way you like it. And then again, make sure your utilities and everything are on because, uh, and you'll know if they're not because if you're standing in uh, a room of darkness and no heat or no AC, then you know something went wrong. But if you used our friends at Utility Connect, then that is not the case. <laughs> so everything is turned on, ready to go. Maybe you have some TV you can start watching. And then also you want to make sure all the paperwork was done and closed. You know, everything was closed out. You've gotten word from the attorney or the title company. If you were renting, you know, you want to check in and check in with the landlord, make sure everything was good to go. They're going to be mailing your security deposit back, whatever the case may be. You just start to kind of finalize these steps. Now, something else you might want to do on your new home is change all the locks. Yes, you got the keys to your brand new home, but maybe you've looked at all the locks and the deadbolts and you're kind of like, ah, you know what? I'm going to run down to Home Depot and buy all new locks and deadbolts. That's perfectly reasonable to do. We highly recommend it as well because you don't know, hey, <laughs> who has the set of those keys, right? So maybe they gave you their keys, but maybe the neighbor has keys. Maybe their friends or their uncle or somebody else has keys to that house. And if you just want to eliminate all that, go change out the locks. Then, of course, on top of that, you want to start scheduling to get your license and registration and those types of things all updated. You want to find your local DMV, start, uh, you know, getting that taken care of. Usually, I think the law gives you anywhere from 30 to 90 days to get your license and everything switched over. Shouldn't be a problem. Just find your local DMV, go down there. Now, what they will typically require is a couple of utility bills. So that's a little bit of the challenge. Usually you have to be in your home for, you know, 30 days or so before you'll get your first utility bill. So make sure you wait to do that first, get that first utility bill, maybe electric and gas. Sometimes they want to. Then when you go down to the DMV, that makes it very easy for them to change the address on your license or issue you a new license, especially if you're moving to a new state. And that should be a pretty simple process. And there you have it. That should be your quick guide to uh, relocating to a new area, even if it's not Dallas, Texas. But again, if it is Dallas, Texas, my name is Levi Lassick. We would love to help you make a smooth move here to the Dallas area. If you check the description box below. All of our contact information is there. Plus we have the information for Utility Connect and a few other services that might help you out on your move. And if you have any questions at all whatsoever, just be sure to reach out because we're happy to discuss this with you and guide you through this process. Look, I've been through it about six or seven times myself moving in and out of state, especially with the military, but also we've helped so many families just like you make their move here. This is our specialty is relocation. And so we can walk you through this entire process. It will seem like a lot could be a little bit overwhelming, but we just got to break it down in small bite-sized pieces to make it a little bit more digestible, a little bit easier to handle. And we're happy to walk you through that every way we can. So make sure you reach out, give us a call, shoot us a text or send us an email or schedule a Zoom call. All of that information is below. And until next time, well, we hope to show you around town.